Oi, fellow comrades. It's Squid Tart here, and welcome back to another 2023 prediction for the college football season. Today, we are doing the last two predictions. Today, we're, right now, we're doing West Virginia, the West Virginia Mountaineers. And tonight, stay tuned for the final prediction. And, uh, well, there's no clear giveaway to who, who it's going to be. But nonetheless, it's going to roll into the prediction for today. So West Virginia, the West Virginia Mountaineers. What are we going to expect out of this team? Well, I don't know. Not a lot. Uh, looking at what they've got and looking at what they've, uh, you know, going into the last year, West Virginia really wasn't all that good. They didn't have a great season. They did beat Oklahoma, which was the highlight of their season. But we knew from the first two games that they played that it was not going to be a great year. Ended up losing to both Pittsburgh and Kansas, which both were pretty good teams to their credit. But also, you know, lost it. Uh, you know, lost to teams like Texas Tech, embarrassingly, uh, lost at Iowa State. You know, they I mean, it wasn't like they had too many embarrassing losses, but they also didn't pick up many wins either. They did pick up Oklahoma State at the end of the season to sort of salvage the five and seven record. Still didn't mean they went to a bowl, but it was kind of like, you know, maybe there's some hope in the future. Well, Looking at what they've got for this season, uh, Neil Brown coming back for another year, surprisingly, and he knows, and I'm sure everyone else knows, that it's a make it or break it year for him. West Virginia has got to perform to a higher level, otherwise he may end up finding himself on the hot seat or even canned. So, uh, yeah, let's see what he's got in terms of the roster. Of course, Garrett Green probably going to stay the starting quarterback for West Virginia this season. They lost JT Daniels, who is going to be the starting quarterback, but he transferred for the uh, umpteenth time this you know the, the food college so we won't be seeing any more of him at West Virginia um, so as it stands now it's looking like West Virginia is going to have Garrett Green to be the starting quarterback in terms of talent well they've I mean they've got a pretty good offensive line who I think can make an impact for him they also have a you know an impact transfer wide receiver that being Devin Carter transfer from NC State who I think will definitely be an impact player for this season he's going to be the guy that i think green's going to have uh you know he's who he's going to have his eyes locked on for a pretty long time uh and he's going to be an impact player for this season in terms of the defense there really is not much going for them i think uh, aubrey ba uh, aubrey burks can be a pretty good player for him um there's also sean martin uh but I will say, other than uh, Lee Kapogba, I think if I pronounce that wrong, my apologies on that. But nonetheless, um, other than him, there's nobody else on this West Virginia defense that is heading into their final year. So this is a pretty young team playing for West Virginia. And it would be interesting to see if they maybe they can rally around that and, you know, possibly have a pretty good year. But as for this and their schedule... It is a monstrous schedule. We'll get into it momentarily, but before I do, make sure you give this video a like and sub up to Squid Tart Sports if you have not already. I've done a lot of these predictions. They have the last one coming tomorrow, or excuse me, tonight, and go check out the uh, the last prediction, uh, the last predictions that I did. Uh, and make sure to join that college football Discord server if you haven't already. We have a great time in there. Uh, it's, it's a phenomenal time. Do, do go check that out when you can. Okay, anyway, let's roll into the schedule. And starting out, they sure do start out with an absolute doozy of a game. Traveling to Happy Valley to play the Penn State Nittany Lions. Now, if you know anything about what I think of Penn State, I actually think they're going to be a very, very good team this year. They are losing Sean Clifford, but I think Drew Alar might be better than him. And, uh, well, Sean, uh, you know, James Franklin has got a great team going there, a lot of talent, a great defense. I think they highly out-talent West Virginia and unfortunately, that does mean West Virginia starts out their 2023 season with an L. So that is tough, but, you know, that's just the way it is when you play a schedule like that and play an opponent like that week one. But after that, you get Duquesne. And, well, I, I remembered how to pronounce that, thankfully. But, yeah, Duquesne after uh, the Penn State game. A good warm-up game for the rest of the season. Going to help them out. They absolutely need it. So they get a win there, 1-1, one one, heading into the next game. 
They host Pittsburgh, their hated rival in the backyard brawl. This is always a heated rivalry, not just through Twitter, of course, but also through uh, just the, uh, the the environment, the players. Uh, I mean, everybody knows how big of a rivalry this is for both schools. Um, and Pittsburgh, as it stands right now, a pretty good team. They will be around the same level that they were last year. I think there's a lot going for them. Uh, Pat Narduzzi has sort of developed this villain type type of uh, attitude to some of these things. And I think we'll see a lot of that kind of be, I think we'll see a lot of that narrative in this game. However, when it just comes to the football game alone, I think both of these teams, I think it'll be a decent matchup to watch, but I think it'll go exactly like it did last year. I don't think West Virginia will be able to rally up enough to get the W over Pittsburgh, which means unfortunately you lose that one and uh, go to one and two. After that, you got Texas Tech, the old Red Raiders, and man, are they a pretty good team this season. They're bringing back a bunch of their talent, and uh, you know, in most people's eyes, they're the dark horse for a possible possible spot in the Big 12 championship. So look out for this team. Even with West Virginia having the home field advantage, Texas Tech, I think, has the edge in talent enough to where I think they get the W on the road. Uh, and unfortunately, that does mean West Virginia loses their third game. Uh, now we're sitting at one and three. Hey, and it doesn't get any easier from here. After that, you travel out on the road to play TCU. And while I don't think this is the TCU team that we saw last year that's going to go on and win it or you know compete in a national championship, I also think uh, TCU is still a pretty good team. Even though they are losing Quentin Johnston and uh, Max Duggan, this is still a team to watch for this season. They've got a lot of key pieces returning for this year. Sonny Dykes, I think, will have another great year. Um, and to be honest, I, just like the Texas Tech thing, there are a lot of teams that kind of just out-talent West Virginia. Uh, so unfortunately, this is where you take another L for the season. However, you got your bye week now. And after a bye, you play one of the newest additions to the Big 12, Houston, traveling out on the road to play them. Now, <clears throat> This is going to be a tough game for West Virginia. It's it's very far away from their, where they're uh, used to playing, of course. Uh, and, you know, Houston, while they're definitely, I mean, I, I would say that they're, you know, striding towards the bottom of the Big 12 this season. I don't really, I don't really see them having a nice awakening to their first year in the Big 12. So with the bye week to prepare, I think West Virginia goes out and beats Houston on the road, gets back on the winning track of things. And after that, you got Oklahoma State at home playing this team. And Oklahoma State, you know, I think Mike Gundy is looking for a revenge tour this year. Uh, definitely was not the year that he was wanting last season. And I, I do think Oklahoma State <clears throat> is going to be a pretty good team to watch for this season. However, when it comes to this matchup traveling out on the road, you got to win to help you out. And Oklahoma State, it doesn't get any easier for them. Um, I forgot who they play uh, right before this. I think it is uh, Oklahoma. But point is, um, you know, I think they're going to be kind of low in this game. They may overlook West Virginia. I actually have this as an upset in favor of the Mountaineers. I think they go and beat Oklahoma State at home get the uh, record back on track. Now they're sitting at three and four heading into the final five games of the season, but it unfortunately does not get any easier from here. UCF out on the road, and unlike Houston, UCF has a lot more going for them. Gus Malzahn coming in for another year to coach. They got a, quite a bit of talent going for them, enough to where I think they're where they can compete at a higher level in the Big 12. Uh, and, you know, they're going to be a decent team this year, I think, record wise. As it stands in this matchup against West Virginia, traveling down to an environment you're not used to playing in in South Florida. Um, you know, this is, I mean, Central Florida, I mean, that, the two completely dif different teams there. But nonetheless, uh, this is going to be a tough environment for West Virginia to play in. So tough, in fact, I think you lose this one as well. UCF, I think, beats you in that uh, format. It might be a close game, but I do not think West Virginia carries it out. And, you know, that's... I think that's going to carry on through the rest of the season. BYU at home is next. And while I don't think BYU will be as good as UCF, it's still, you know, a team that's been able to compete at the Power 5 level. And, you know, they're used to playing at that level, unlike uh, some of these other teams here that have recently went to the Big 12. So, 
you know, while I don't think BYU will necessarily be a really good team, they're still a highly experienced team, got a lot of seniors coming in this season, and even with home field, it's not looking like West Virginia is going to win that one either. So now you're three and six heading into the last three games, and uh, unfortunately, like I say, like I've kept saying, does not get any easier. After that, you go on the road to play the Sooners of Oklahoma, and the Oklahoma game uh, last year, of course, you beat them. And it was a fun game to watch, but now you got to play him on the road, traveling to Norman to play this team. A Brett Venables team that I think will be a lot better than they were last season. They're bringing back a lot of their key pieces. The offense is going to be great. Dylan Gabriel, I think, is going to make a lot of noise in the Big 12. And to be honest, I just don't see West Virginia competing here in this one. I think Oklahoma is just the better team, uh, you know, whichever way you look at it. So now three and seven heading into the last two games of the schedule. Cincinnati at home. I gave you the loss to BYU, and you know the Cincinnati game. I think Cincinnati is probably going to have a very rough run in the uh, the Big Twelve. Though they're losing Luke Fickle, of course, and that is a big loss for him. And while they still have some talented pieces, I don't think it'll be enough to really compete at the Big 12 immediately. So therefore, I actually think West Virginia rallies together late in the season and gets the W at home and beats Cincinnati to at least salvage whatever there is left of the season. So now 4-7 and seven heading into the final game of the year on the road at Baylor. And, you know, Baylor, I actually have this team uh, getting the upset over Texas, so that should tell you a little bit of what I know about this team. They are going to be a good team to watch this season. I don't think they'll be competing for Big 12 good, but I've said that about a lot of teams here, and I've also had West Virginia losing to those types of teams. And with the road advantage for Baylor, it does not go West Virginia's way either. So I have West Virginia's prediction sitting at four and eight. And, you know, shout out to Mountain Quasar for requesting me to do this team. However, um, you know, I did not say it was going to be a pretty prediction for you. Uh, so, you know, shout out to you. Sorry about the prediction. Maybe you guys prove me wrong. And if you go out and beat Penn State week one and throw basically all my predictions out the window, then by all means, uh, that'd be that'd be a great w for uh west virginia but nonetheless this is my this is what my prediction stands at for y'all we'll see if it lines up though and that'll wrap up my prediction for the mountaineers so tell me what you think down in the comments below whether or not you think i'm smart or dumb for my prediction here if west virginia can win a whole lot more than this or if you think uh neil brown is just waiting to get canned out of uh you know west virginia so let me know what you think and uh well um uh, you know uh, that's just uh, this whole prediction uh, here is it's just way the way the crumble cookies so you know, I, don't, I don't know how it works uh you know country roads take me home to the place that i belong <laughs> anyway though thank you guys again for watching uh make sure to leave a like and sub up to squid tart sports if you haven't already i'll see you all later on today when i do my last prediction unless if there's any more requests in the future so uh until then i shall see you all in the next video and as always power to tardarian